This episode of TechZilla is sponsored by the United States Air Force, Netflix, and GoDaddy.com. Now, coming up on this episode, what's the best camera for tossing, and why would you toss one? Are you in the market for a serious photo printer? We've got several recommendations that are top of the line, Twittering alternatives, ways you can send out Twitter messages without logging on to the Twitter site, and an open source office suite save hundreds over that Microsoft product you may have heard of. Pour yourself a glass of refreshing iced tea and kick back, because Techzilla starts now. Welcome to Dexter, I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Veronica Belmont. And we're fighting right now. We're in a fight? Yeah. The whole dance thing? Oh. Oh, yeah, because this is the only dance I know. <laughs> Thanks a lot for pointing that out. Great. Actually, you pointed it out. I just laughed. You just made fun of me for it. And that's where the trouble started. We've got a great show lined up for you today, not to change the subject, but first things first. Yes, we'd like to remind you that 15 lucky viewers will have the opportunity to participate in an online meeting with Patrick and producer Roger on May 5th, 12 p.m., courtesy of GoToMeeting.com. It's 12 p.m. Eastern Time. And with your feedback and suggestions, we hope to tailor Texilla and System into shows you want to watch. What, you don't want to watch them already? Actually, What's that supposed to there's mean? a lot of them watching right now. Yes, for Please. a chance to participate. It's all about the audience participation. It's all about the audience participation. Yes. For a chance <laughs> to participate, sign up, if you haven't already, for a free go-to meeting trial with the code TECHZILLA. Email us at techzilla at revision3.com with the subject line of go-to meeting contest. Include your go-to meeting confirmation number, and you'll be automatically entered into the drawing for a chance to participate in an online meeting with Patrick and Roger. <laughs> Jolly old Roger. Good luck, and if you're lucky, we'll catch you online Monday, May 5th at 12 p.m. Eastern. Jolly bitter. He's How come Roger. I'm not invited? You want to be in the meeting? We can when make that Monday? happen. Mm, 9 a.m. Monday morning? We'll see. Mm -hmm. I might still be asleep. You're a MacBook user, right? MacBook Pro user, yes. Ooh, oh, MacBook Pro. Have, have you downloaded the new EFI firmware update? I think so. Check it out, because chances are, we've got a link up in the show notes right now. This is a great one for MacBook and MacBook Pro users who have been, or I should say MacBook primarily users, who have been having problems with crashing, restarting, monitor resetting, all sorts of weird little issues that have been kind of ignored, might be fixed with this firmware update 1.2. Came out at the beginning of April, but it doesn't seem to be auto-updating when you run uh, your software updates. And it basically, all they say is it fixes several issues to improve the stability of MacBook computers. Um, we'll put the directions. You're going to have to manually download it, install it. It fixed. I was getting... Um, kernel panics like daily sometimes multiple times daily and i'd be running really challenging software like textpad which is wordpad oh, yeah, for folks on the windows side and a, a couple hawk. of browsers and this has so far i have not had a kernel panic since the update Every time you say panic, I just want to go, panic! <laughs> <laughs> you can panic in multiple panic languages. Button, oh no. well, that's Sorry. the problem. Is you're like, you hit the power button and it wipes everything out and you start all over again. We had a panic last night in our home entertainment system. Uh oh. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, uh, everything just shut down. Really? Like it was like a power outage in my house. But like none of the lights went out, just everything in the home theater. And then the Xbox 360 had like the, the red rings. Uh -huh. And we were all like, oh my god, crap, it's going to be terrible. And then everything just turned back on and it was fine. Uh, I had a really good friend of mine had the. I was like, <gasps> had the scariest thing happen. They were, the PG&E, the Pacific Gas and Electric, was working on a, they were basically changing some giant piece of wire onto the street. Mm -hmm. And somebody connected wire one where wire two was supposed to go, blew out every electrical appliance in their entire building, and I guess a couple of buildings around of it, television, refrigerator, the electric stove, his TV, his Mac, uh, his I should say his like Apple IIe he's oh, had since he was like goodness. seven, um, his new computer we just yeah. built for him, his stereo, his DVD player, it was insane. Jeez. Blew up everything. They ran like 400 volts. Did he get PG&E to pay for that? PG&E was kind of like, we made a mistake, give us a list. Our bad. Our bad. Anyhow, speaking of yeah. Macs, uh, what if I told you you could buy a non-Mac machine running OS X? Pretty fancy, huh? Well, it turns out that uh, SciStar Corporation is selling PC machines running OS X courtesy of an EFI hack. And a lot of you have been emailing about this. Can I buy one? It's it's like better than a MacBook, or I should say a Mac Mini for, mm -hmm. for less money. Basically, it's a white box PC. It's a standard uh, Windows box selling for about 400 bucks. And it's really funny because not only Apple really hasn't talked about it, but what you're going to expect Apple's top team of scary wolf lawyers to be descending <laughs> upon Florida any time now. With Release the wolves! Exactly. And and they're pretty intense. Apple, they love their lawyers. And the um, dogs with bees. 
dogs with coming bees. Coming out of their mouths. That's really scary. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyhow, but wait, yeah, so bees how come they haven't like sued them hell. into oblivion yet? Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised like their their website hasn't disappeared again for legal reasons and not just because it's it's been, you know, it gadgeted and, mm -hmm. and website linked to death. Um, but it's it's the the boxes have actually started shipping. They're basically they're taking a uh, basically a very cool EFI hack that allows you to run OS X on a regular PC against the wishes of the people that wrote it. They basically are violating the terms of agreement by selling it commercially. So there's another lawsuit right there. And when it shows up, it turns out that they basically give you a shrink-wrapped copy of OS X. Uh, OS X is pre-installed on the box, and you can't reinstall OS X because they don't give you the code. So if you have to reinstall it, you have to find the free software you can already buy online. So maybe you just want to try, you know, OS X86 and do it yourself. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah, I, I mean, we were waiting for people to get theirs delivered mm -hmm. to prove if it was actually going to happen. It's, it's happening. And it is happening. People are getting mm -hmm. their computers. And this is the one that you can choose if you can get Windows, Linux, or OS X in installed with it, right? I believe so. You have so. your choice of operating system. Why not? This is so ridiculous. I don't even understand. Would you buy it? Would you buy this this machine? I'll tell you, we've had a lot of people, part of the reason we talk about this, we've had people email about being very excited about the Star. We have mm -hmm. people emailing about OS X86. I'll tell you what, if enough of you are curious about installing OS X86 on a PC, I'll see if I can get it running on the $500 PC. There's, you basically have to have the right hardware configuration that's compatible, and then it becomes kind of easy and I put that in brackets um, but I think it's I think this this is a company where somebody's like you know what somebody should maybe maybe they have a whole bunch of lawyers on retainer and they think they'll they'll be able to stay I don't know Apple. they seem like a pretty small company I, I highly doubt they have a massive yeah I'd say they're probably a future smoking hole in the ground that's what shipping as many boxes lawyers? as they can a murder of lawyers it's a murder a of gaggle crows. Of of lawyers. I'm just trying to think of an appropriate I have term several for. friends with law degrees who practice. I will ask them. Okay, good. Yeah. I'd like to know what that is. So we should turn it over to you guys though. What do you think? Would you spend money on a Psystar knowing that you, uh, knowing what you know about the machines? We'll have a poll in the show notes and in the forum, so definitely let us know. All right, shall we move forward? Absolutely. Away from the possibly illegal boxes <laughs> and... Uh, Boxing of doom. Possibly running illegal versions of OS X. I think it's time for the first email question. Okay, well we have our first email and it's actually uh, the most odd. It seems <laughs> Brian is into the sport of camera tossing and asked us this question. Have you ever heard of camera tossing? Oh dear God, he's doing it. Is there a safe way to do this? Since the images can be really cool, I don't want to trash my DSLR or my iPhone for that matter in Patrick's case. So, WTF. Okay, what is cam pat camera tossing? So camera tossing, which I'm doing with my iPhone right now. Uh, well, look at the screen right now. You see these images, these big, crazy, swirly images. These did not come from my iPhone. Um, they're from the Flickr. Uh, camera tossing group, and the idea is that you get images by this by practicing a special photographic technique, which is very hard to do with an iPhone. Basically, you hold the shutter ah! and you fling it in the air. And that didn't work very well. But we're going to try it one more time and hopefully not hit anybody in the head. But you get the idea, this is enormously uh, dumb. But if you do it right, you get something that looks really crappy like that. So, you know what? <laughs> look at these Look at the pictures on Flickr. These are amazing. These crazy, trippy. Somebody been dropping acid, kind of a lighting thing. But I like what JPEG Mag says that the tech near, uh, the technique here is regarded by some as insanity. For we are the reckless folks on Flickr that enjoy the abstract chance generative physical photography that results from throwing our cameras into the air, most often at night in front of varied light sources. Now, the heart of camera tossing, I'm told, is cameratoss.blogspot.com, which even has a tossing guide for beginners. And what do they say? Basically, set it for a half second to two second. Um, Shutter speed, you kind of hold it in, and you start with a half inch toss indoors, right? Maybe above a pillow. Oh, so you work up to the insane, like eight feet in the air kind well, of toss? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really simple, right? If you can't afford to lose the camera, don't toss the camera. Or maybe get a giant Nerf ball and carve out a camera-like space for it and stuff it inside of that and hope it doesn't land on the lens. I mean, basically, you know, this is a fun way to try to do something that could basically end up destroying your equipment. So use cheap equipment if you have it. You know, aim for half second to two seconds on the shutter speed. And while you might think the number one thing is to keep the camera from hitting the ground, I'd say worry more about catching it on your forehead. If you've ever had a half pound, pound and a half steel or even heavy plastic object bang into you. No, I'm sorry. I'd rather have it hit me in the head than land on the ground. If that if that's what it took to not break, 
I would rather have it knock me unconscious than the, the only thing. On the, ground. the only thing worse than like breaking your camera because you dropped it on asphalt is having it hit your head, knock you out, and then carve fall. your skull over, and then bounce onto the asphalt. So <gasps> why would you do this? I mean, your camera. Did you see the like, pictures? They're pretty. They're these shiny. Ones they're are abstract. Like, they can be up to a thousand dollars with a kit. More, or you know, way more if you're really into photography. Why would you endanger such a beautiful gadget? Oh wait, 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 like, wait, 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 wait. You know why? Fathom. You know why? Wait, wait, hold on. Check this out. This. Check this out. I'm just not adventurous. You get images like this. All right, that's kind of that's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> see, see, look at that. You One win little... this round, Norton. <laughs> <laughs> One little look and look how excited she got. So, I mean, I'm still not going to do it. I'll do it with your iPhone. It's okay. You can we, you know, we'll find you a nice inexpensive camera to do it with. But basically, that was tossing this in the studio. It's pretty wild, huh? So anyhow, um, you know, basically, yeah, I agree. It's dumb. It's stupid. But look, you were like, oh, I'm a little shiny. bit impressed. You're a little bit impressed. A little bit impressed. But it only not took me like, like eight tosses to in the studio. I'm liking that. I want to. I got to figure out. Oh, it was the tally light. The this red light there me. was the tally light on the set. Anyhow, spend some time in the Flickr group, which even has toss event listings, which I actually really want to go to one because I want to see like 25 maniacs with their cameras, like wee, fling them. What into if you the throw air. one up in the air and get it confused with someone else's? I think they throw them up one at a time. Maybe they take. If a they did them all at once at graduation. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Hey, I, I went with a three-year-old rebel and came back with a, you know, D80. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be kind of cool. cool. That'd be kind of cool. All right, well, <laughs> you know what? I think now would be a good time to uh, talk about our Netflix-sponsored movie pick of the week. And I am super excited about this one because it's one of my personal favorites, Serenity. Woohoo! Serenity is essentially the wrap-up to the short lived sadly very very sadly uh, TV series Firefly which Way I, to go, I Fox. love. You'll appreciate the movie more if you've seen the series but if you haven't don't worry it can stand on its own just fine. It tells the story of a group of rebels who are harboring a fugitive on their spaceship while they simultaneously outsmart the government and uncover the secret behind the monstrous readers. Space travel, fight scenes, witty one-liners, you will not be disappointed with this gem. Plus, we'll be setting up a thread in the Revision 3 forum, so after you're done watching, tell us what you think in the forum thread. And don't forget, if you're craving movie rentals without driving to the store, check out Netflix.com. With over 90,000 titles online, including Blu-ray titles, you're bound to find the title you're looking for. Plus, with 40 shipping centers, almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. And shipping both ways is free. Whoop. Plans start at $4.99, but as a Tech Zilla viewer, you can get a free trial by signing up at www.netflix.com slash Techzilla. It's time once again for the Techzilla Gadget of the Week, where we share with you that one gadget gizmo or device that makes our lives just a little bit easier. This week's pick, USB flash drive, without <laughs> which I laugh, but without the lowly USB flash drive, Techzilla itself would not come to you on a weekly basis. Now you can find a USB flash drive on sale just about anywhere. They're so cheap they give them away with press kits and they're probably one of the most underrated pieces of computing technology available. But while it might be underappreciated, it's definitely indispensable. With the depth of the floppy drive, the USB flash drive has proved to be the great way, perhaps the only way, to continue the grand tradition of sneaker netting small files from one machine to another, whether it's across the room, across town, or because you want to have that favorite document or that favorite application anywhere you go, right in your pocket. From MP3s, videos and photos, important documents, applications and encrypted data, you can copy pretty much anything to these drives. And with sizes raising from a tiny 512 megabytes, probably comes with your toothbrush, to 8, 16 and even 32 gigabyte models, you can find a USB flash drive that fits your particular needs and budget. We use USB thumb drives to transfer between darn near any machine without any problem, including Mac, Linux boxes, laptops, and even video game consoles like the Xbox 360 and PS3. Not to mention some car stereos and, well, you get the idea. While not everyone might appreciate the power of the lowly USB flash drive, you can be sure the crew here at Techzilla does. After all, we use them every single day. All right, Patty, what are you doing? Yeah, power supply issue. It's dead now. Don't worry I have about to it. Add, I have more questions to ask. Okay. All right, can you get with the program? I was attacked by a power supply. It's 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 a question from David in Northern Ireland. All right, David in Northern Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to know. I've been using Twitter for a number of months now, and I like the fact that I can tweet from the web, my phone, or via IM. I've been looking around the interwebs for a good Twitter desktop client. I've tried out Twitter and Twitterlicious, and they just haven't been good programs. They don't look particularly professional, and they can crash often under Vista X64, Ooh. David. The gold um, standard of operating system tests. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, there are quite a few different options that you can have. I mean, for one, you can pretty much you can go to Twitter and go to the uh, their PB Wiki, mm -hmm. and it has a list of 
every app or every website or anything that uses their API. So you're pretty much you're you're gonna find something you like. But personally, yeah, there's I mean there's almost a one to one ratio between Twitter users and like Twitter and websites and things applications. that have been built for Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it's just exactly. A, it's a long list. Yeah, but my personal favorite is Twirl. Uh, it's T W H I R L, and it will run on anything because it runs on Adobe Air. I haven't I haven't personally run it on 64 bit Vista, but I've run it on 32 bit Vista and had zero problems. Yeah, I run it on OS. 10 and mm -hmm. it works great and I really enjoy it quite a bit. It's got every every feature you could possibly need. They were just recently bought by uh, Seismic, which is oh, really? a, a video sharing platform that you can do like video blogging or upload videos and have like a friends list. It's kind of yeah. like Twitter for video. That's a really a scary sense. thought. And I now mean, they have that app too. I don't know. I, I got to be honest with you, I didn't really get Twitter until I started running sort of Twirl and some of the other applications like that. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a big Twirl fan. I'm a Twitter pusher myself, so <laughs> everyone I meet, I get them to sign up. What is your Twitter? My Twitter is twitter.com slash Veronica. And I'm twitter.com slash Patrick Norton. But anyway, we are digressing. <laughs> uh, if you have an iPhone, um, Halo, Halo, H-A-H-L-O, mm -hmm. uh, is a great app that runs on the iPhone that makes, uh, it's just a web-based app, you know, just like anything else. Right. It, you don't need to have a hacked iPhone for, to use it or anything like that. But There's some really cool hacked iPhone ones, but we're not even going to touch those. <laughs> Mm. They are really cool. So yeah, Twitter, you know, you can use it pretty much any way you can think of. I mean, there's a million billion different ways. So yeah. And if you don't know what Twitter is, just go sign up, experience it, be freaked out, be fascinated. Follow us. Follow us. <laughs> Follow Roger. What's Ro Roger? Hint, hint, what's yours? Nudge, nudge. Roger. R Roger is Jolly Roger. Jolly Roger. Yeah. Twitter.com slash Jolly Roger. We're on there. I mean, if John C. Dvorak will sign up for it, you know it must be good, right? I've got Henry Rollins and Warren Ellis, and mm -hmm. it's just Barack Obama. It's fascinating. Maybe. He's There's... probably not really tweeting himself. He's probably got some guy. All presidents tweet themselves. All presidential He's not candidates the president tweet yet. themselves. Jeez, way to try to insinuate your political beliefs into Did, the show, Patrick. Nixon Twitter, it was just different back then. We Nixon was a, let's not even go there. We, we noticed a couple of posts in the forums about, what is this GTA 4? Would that be Woohoo! Grand Theft Auto 4? Happy Girl to my left here is uh, enthused. Happy Girl likes to kill prostitutes and steal their money back. <laughs> so much for the G rating on this show. Um, it's not really surprising that you've been talking about it in the forums because it's being released this week. And since Veronica was bouncing literally up and down with joy, vibrating like a small action figure on a pool table, we thought it would be a great opportunity for Veronica to talk to our old buddy Garnet Lee and OneUp.com about this rather highly anticipated game. Let's go. Joining me now is 1UP's executive editor and friend of the Zilla, Garnet Lee. We asked Garnet to give us his expert view on GTA 4, which I'm extremely excited about. You're Grand excited Theft about Auto. It. Oh, I'm super excited. I love coming it. back as an expert. This is awesome. You're a super expert guy. Ooh, super expert guy. I don't know. Yeah. So, Grand Theft, you're excited? You got one waiting for you when you get home? Yes, yes, yes. I am very much looking forward to, uh, you know, going all out. So what do you most want to know about the game? Um, let's see. So it's getting insane reviews all across the board. I looked on Metacritic and it had like a 99. So that's kind of the amalgamation of all the awesome reviews that are out there on the internet. <sighs> that is really intense. I mean, that's, you know, basically Ocarina of Time was kind of the gold standard for high reviews and now GTA 4 comes along and kind of blows it out of the water. Why is it so good, basically, is what I'm asking. Well, it's because it's really grown up a lot. You know, this game has been a long time under development and I mm -hmm. think people really got skeptical of it over that time, right? Because there was such a long delay between San Andreas and this. You have new machines, you have a lot of the hot coffee fallout, you had people, yes. you know, it was assaulted from all directions, right? So there's, there's a lot of skepticism and, and for it to pull this off, I think, just speaks to volumes of how much they've really improved the way they make the game. They actually shrank the amount of space that they put in the game. So like San Andreas was three cities. Right. This is one city. But the one city has so much density that it really feels like you're in a real city. You go everywhere from, you know, a suburban, you know, residential area where you have tree-lined streets and that sort of things into, you know, the grittiest downtown warehouse district over to, you know, some place that's got seedy dive bars. It has everything. It really feels like a real city. Mm -hmm. So I think that why it got the score is that it has 
both the open-endedness, where you can get into it and play around with the game. At the same time, it has this new character in Nico, who's a pretty interesting guy. I mean, we haven't really played a Eastern European immigrant. That's right, a, that's where is really, he from? They don't say. They don't say where he's from. So he's unknown Eastern European descent. And he comes in and he really embodies kind of like this whole take on the broken American dream, right? Because he's lured over by his brother, and he gets here and he finds out that things aren't really like what they think they are. But you, you ever watch like, you ever watch like The Wire? Or, mm -hmm. or the, so it really plays into that idea. Right, because you can you can almost picture these things. You like you have this imagination of, yeah, I know I, I have a context to picture that gang warfare and organized crime lord sort of thing. Yeah. So he's basically kind of like a good guy put in terrible situations. Well, let's not call him a good guy. Okay. I mean, anyone that takes a gun and puts it to the back of someone's head and you know drops them, that's not a good guy, right? But he's more sympathetic than other leading men we've had in the past on GTA. Like he has a he has a girlfriend. He sure. like really cares well, about CJ, her. Well, CJ in San Andreas had a girlfriend, had girlfriends, you know. But I think that what we're getting to, yeah. <laughs> that makes it better. Of course. The, the multiplicity of it, yes. What we're getting to here is that the game's able to convey some of those themes like, again, I'm going to go back to more television show sort of stuff, like The Shield, okay? Again, here's a guy who's not a good guy, but he's not a bad guy, and you start to sympathize and you build that bridge, and that's why that's why it really clicks, you know? It catches you. It's complicated. You. It's complicated. It's complicated. It's complicated. There's so a lot of stuff going on. It's like your Facebook relationship. It's, it's not black it's and white. It's complicated. It's complicated. It's awful. Never make that association again. Anyway, uh, so how are the graphics in this game? Are they really like a step up and beyond, beyond the uh, the PS2 version? You know, I mean, it's got to be. They're better looking games out there, but they're not better looking games that have the size and scope of the city that this has. You've got it both on 360 and PS3, and they're, they're, they look subtly different. Mm -hmm. The PS, because of the way the difference is the hardware, right? The PS3 has some has some subtle texturing uh, filters that it applies, and it, some people have said that the colors look warmer and softer, but that the 360 looks more high res. I, whatever. They both look fantastic. The game plays well. I think the big difference is online. You know, both of the systems have online, but the 360's online system is more sophisticated. For instance, you know, just because of live, when you're playing in 360, you're going to know when your friends hop on. You can say, hey, let's all get together. And I can tell you from having played co-op, this is going to sound horrible, but having played co-op, you know, together, like one of the most thing, fun things to do is get three of your buddies together, hop in a car, and go do drive-bys. <laughs> <laughs> it totally it sounds awful, right? But it's like it's yeah. really, really fun. You have these gang war modes where where you're trying to uh, vie for controls at different parts of the city, and and when yeah, when you're all loaded up in the, in your ride and you know hanging out the window with your with your nines, it sounds so stupid. Oh, I feel so dumb now, but it's really it is actually really fun. It is really fun, right? How many people can you have in the multiplayer mode? Is uh, it sixteen? A lot, time? plenty, enough plenty. to have fun. Right. I don't know. I don't really get hung up on numbers and stuff like that. So yeah. enough to have a lot of fun. You won't. You won't. You won't be thinking. Oh, I wish I had more people in this game. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, can you expect anything like the hot coffee situation to come again? Like, is it just going to take some time before people um, are stripping the clothes off people, or what? I don't know. I mean, hot coffee was silly, right? Hot mm -hmm. coffee was. You actually had to break the game to get to hot coffee, and that that was more of a political situation that got manipulated into a much bigger thing. I mean, is there something hidden inside the code? Could there be? Sure. Probably. I mean, programmers like to leave Easter eggs, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't put it above someone to have stuck something in there. And if it's there, someone will find it, and they'll blow it out of proportion. But I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you have to really worry about it a lot. So what is the most effed up thing you've done in the game so far? Well, I, that's such a difficult question, because I kind of play through the story first, and I'm still really immersed in that part. And I think that like the whole screwed up stuff is when you start going outside of the storyline. You know, After you finish the game, and you're just raising hell and, and going crazy in the game. And that's really what a lot of people will do. I mean, I think that probably more people play the game to screw around in it than play the game for the storyline. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably an anomaly. For me, um, just seeing like the descent of Nico into uh, this, this it, disillusioned underbelly of Liberty City has really affected me, and and the, when he, I mean, he, uh, well, I don't want to spoil the story, but there's there's an assassinate. He has to take someone out that's very close to him, and by that point, you're like, wow, that's that's cold blooded, hardcore. So, what are some of the new features that we can look for in the game? I've heard that there's a GPS like thing going on when you're driving around. There's all kinds of weird stuff. I mean, one of the things that I haven't caught on to, but some of the guys in the office thought was really fun, is you can go to the internet cafe, and they, yeah, like, so I don't know why you want to go to the internet cafe within the game, but you can go to the internet cafe within the game, and they have, it's very much like going to the internet cafe. You pull up the net, there's like personals, there's websites to fool around with, there's, wow. there's email, there's all that kind of stuff, and to me, that wasn't really a big pickup, but I know a couple of guys thought that was really cool. One of the things that I like that really pulled me, you know, like, into believing it is your, your interface with the game now is a cell phone. 
phone. And I mean, I carry my cell phone around all the time, so getting texts and calls like that, that felt very natural. Um, and then, of course, there's the radio stations. And mm -hmm. the radio stations are awesome. I think people are going to be a little surprised because the soundtrack to this game is a little more obscure than the previous soundtracks, you know, that had like big hit artists on them and stuff. But it really captures the feel of riding around listening to the, uh, you know, the crazy radio stations you'd be listening to in New York or something. So it's pretty cool. I like that. So, bottom line, do you recommend this game? Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it is definitely for adults. I, I thought it was very funny that Senator Leland Yee issued a, a press conference, your press statement, and said, you know, parents should not be buying this game for their children. Well, it's like, no kidding. Yeah, like, tell me something I didn't know. But for the rest of us, you know, who are old enough to enjoy it and appreciate, you know, again, stuff like I'll touch space on the on the Sopranos and those sort of crime dramas, it's, it's fantastic. The realization of good characters really plays into it. Mm -hmm. Nico's a really, really interesting guy. The way that that story unfolds, Folds, makes a lot of sense and it's fun. It's really solid. All right, Garnet, thank you so much for uh, coming in today and telling us all about GTA 4. I can't wait to go home and wreak some havoc both by myself and online. We should trade gamer tags. You can come You can come ride my car. Oh, sweet. We can do some drive bys Nice. Pop, pop. Just like that. Was that, that was terrible. <laughs> well, thank you. If you want to learn more about GTA 4 or just want to catch up on your video game reviews, and you guys have a huge walkthrough, right? We do, complete with videos, all of the uh, hidden secret spots, and you want to do all the missions, we're going to have all those for you laid out, too. Excellent. All right, yeah, check out oneup.com. It's time now for a short message from the United States Air Force. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick, a free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. Today's selections, openoffice.org. If you're looking for a free and functional alternative to Microsoft's Office, then why not try openoffice.org? OpenOffice.org is an open source office suite that offers many of the benefits of Microsoft Office without worries over licensing and cost. OpenOffice.org is fully compatible with Office's file formats, so you can be pretty confident on reading, editing, and saving Docs, XLS, and the Open Document file format. With Writer, a word processor, Calc for spreadsheets, Impress, a presentation program, Base, a database program, Draw, a vector graphic program, and Math, a mathematical equation editor, you'll have enough tools on hand to cover all your productivity needs. And because of its open source nature, OpenOffice is available on a wide range of machines from Linux, Windows, and Unix. For you Mac owners out there, be sure to use NeoOffice, an OpenOffice.org derived version specifically for OS X. So if you're in the market for an inexpensive office suite that delivers functional compatibility with Microsoft Office but won't cost you an arm or a leg, check out OpenOffice.org. Nicholas emails in, my request is this. I'm in the market for a good quality photo printer somewhere between $200 and $700. Good range. Big range. I've been looking at the Epson R1900, the R2400, and the Canon Pro 9000. I mainly print color, but will occasionally print black and white, and I do want to print to the 13 by 19 inch format big prints. Which printer will give me the best quality prints and be the most economical when it comes to the ink? Oh boy. Yeah, right. So if you're <laughs> printing pretty giant photos, you're kind of screwed when it comes to ink either way. Ink is expensive and you're going to be using a lot of it. Yeah, I mean, when I was doing, I did a couple hundred four by six glossies over the holidays and I ended up spending about $300 on ink. Whoa. That was with a six color printer. Now we did about, you know, probably like 250, 300 prints. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever paper, what it should be, what the paper, whatever printer you buy, take a look at the cost per page estimates, or at least the number of maybe prints per cartridge, and it's all over the map with like these six and eight color printers you're talking about here. Um, mostly though, search around for the best price for cartridges online. Look for sales and make sure you print something at least once or twice a month because if you do like a whole bunch of prints and you put the printer away for a couple months, make sure you yank it out at least probably like every two weeks and print something because if you don't, your ink cartridges will dry up mm -hmm. and at, you know, 15 bucks a pop, 13 bucks a pop, six, eight colors, it's like six times 15, that's a big number. But you know, printer ink is actually worth, it's more than its weight in gold. That's a frightening thought. Yeah, like it's actually one of the most valuable things on the planet for <laughs> it's like, the, for the size that you get for the price. 
price. And, and, Isn't you that know, crazy? Well, especially at the low end of the printer market, they're basically they're giving away hardware to sell you ink, mm -hmm. and that's just the horrible reality of that business. You're going to spend money, and with those 13 by 19, if you you know you do like five test copies, you get the color balance the way you want, you're going to be spending a lot of money on ink. I don't think there's any way around that. Right. All right. Well, so let's not worry about ink so much, and, and we'll talk about quality and price. Mm -hmm. uh, one that you mentioned, the Canon PIXMA Pro 9000, sits right in the middle of your price range, around $450 online. And it won a PC Magazine Editor's Choice, so it's definitely a good printer. It's a great photo printer for the price. It uses eight colors of ink to give you a great color gamut, especially on skin tones. And uh, Canon offers some pretty cool fine art papers to go with it, so Textured you don't have to worry papers, about those. So those are always really nice, yeah. yeah. It's a little on the large side, and uh, the text printing is kind of cruddy. But those are minor cons, I would say. Yeah. For for the good quality at the price. It's a it's it's considered one of the best like sort of you know print value pro dollar. It's it's huge. It's mm -hmm. like it's flat feed. It weighs thirty pounds. It's a big big printer. And it's a it's a serious printer. Now serious the, printer is serious. Serious printer. <laughs> it's very serious. Yeah, and then there's the Epson Stylus Photo R nine. 1900? 1900. Yeah, 1900. It can print photos up to 13 by 44 inches. And uh, PC Magazine's reviewer, M. David Stone, who Patrick loves, he's just he's, yakking he's, about him all day. He's been reviewing printers for years. He touches all the good printers. He's just, he just, he does great work reviewing printers. Yeah. And uh, they had some problems with the paper handling, but it still does a great job with photos. Plus, it can print on mm -hmm. CDs. So Which if you have, nice. if you're making that mixtape for your lovely little lady, you can print all the all the titles of the songs right now. <laughs> Lovely lady, right on know. the CD. <laughs> it's going to cost you about 100 to 150 dollars more than you're going to spend for the Pro 9000. But still, very much in your range. Yes. Very much in your range. Now, slightly on the outside of your range is Epson's R2400, and that's going to run you around 850 bucks or so. It uses Epson's new Ultra Chrome K3 ink, which has three shades of black. It's crazy. It's actually two shades of gray plus a black. Uh -huh, and, and the like black they mix cartridge. Them up. Oh, the black cartridge, you can change it um, with different types of paper. So it's supposed to be absolutely outrageous for black and white photos. And of course, it does. So it's good, but that's yeah. going to cost you way more money for buying all those stupid black ink <laughs> cartridges, right? Well, I guess I mean, most people are going to like pick a, a type of paper they like and mm -hmm. pretty much print that all to the time. So you're just going to buy that black cartridge. Yeah. I guess. Um, it's a pretty slick system. Yeah, PC um, Mag wasn't too thrilled with that whole multi cartridge, different it, blacks kind it was, of thing. I think they thought it was strange and mm -hmm. they were okay with the results, but again, they figure, like, you know what, you're probably going to pick one type of paper and just stick to that type of black. It's yeah. just, it's an unusual system. Absolutely. Otherwise, yeah. though, it's, it's an amazing photo printer. Uh, M. David Stone says it's better than anything in its class from HP or Canon. It's perfect for someone like you who's super serious about photo printing. And has some super serious cash to spend on a photo printer. You can print out all your camera toss photos. I like that thought. Mm, and, and stunning, <laughs> lovely photo definition. 19 by 44. That's it, a it can be. You can print. make it as kind of your like last photo your camera ever took before you destroyed it. Make Just it nice and big and glossy and put it right up in your wall to teach you not to do that ever again. You get like a wrestling match and toss the camera over the wrestling mat. Or like it's still could, hard. Or the bouldering mat. No, the, no they're pretty they're If it was like a foam, if it was one of those things like just like a foam, one of those foam pits. What about that the ones the that they carry around for bouldering? Maybe then I would do that. No. no. Maybe. But no. You're just you're just not gonna I'm, do that. I'm I'm totally anti-camera toss. I'm sorry. <laughs> As always, we got links to the reviews in the show notes. Next up we got a question from Kyle who writes in, what is the best GPS out there for the weekend road warrior and why? Kyle, this is a great question. You've also Given us a lot of latitude. You've opened up the floodgates of GPS. Speaking of GPS floodgates, we've got Garmin, Magellan, Lowrance, TomTom, Mio, and umpteen brands you've never heard of, or models from companies that you didn't know made GPS, like Sony, Fuji, Harman Kardon, and Sanyo make GPS devices. So do Holux, Navigon, V7, and Pharos. In short, too many models and too many manufacturers. Now, there's some really cool GPS software you can run in your notebook. Microsoft Streets and Trips 2008, great interface, and Delorme Street Atlas USA, great map data. I can't wait to see the 2009 version, but we'll assume that you're looking for your basic stick it on the dashboard all in one type GPS. Junk. <laughs> Junk. Junk. <laughs> Which actually we, we can no longer attach to the right. windshield it's in the illegal. state of California. It's bad. We're the, literally, we're putting it on the dashboard. Mm -hmm. So for us, kind of the big dividers are how much do you want to spend and do you want to just do GPS duty or do GPS duty and play MP3s, act as a Bluetooth interface for your phone, wash your spare change? You get the idea. 
<laughs> you laugh, but there's some weird features that have shown up in some GPS devices. Mm -hmm. If you have ridiculous amounts of cash, if you've got some money to spend, the ultimate GPS device right now is Garmin's oh, Nuvi so awesome. 880. It is so awesome. You've used it. Yeah. You lucky dog. You can you. be like, I'd like coffee, please. And it's like, there is six coffee places in a you know four block radius. Here's where they are. Now, you didn't have to touch it, though, because it actually has voice yeah, recognition. Yeah, you can just ask it, and it does it. I just, this is the international symbol for it opening up a device of some kind. Yeah, well, what's crazy, though, is right, you can talk to it to do just about anything. And it's got a four-inch screen, MSN direct integration. Mm -hmm. Think about, like, gas prices coming up on the screen at nearby stations so you can pick which one you cool. want to go to. Hands-free calling with your Bluetooth and an FM transmitter for your tunes, and it'll cost you about $1,000. It's a little on the expensive side, but it's pretty freaking awesome. A wee bit. It, it is like if you are the Cadillac shopper, that is the Cadillac of GPS. Yes. On the other end of the spectrum, back around Thanksgiving of 2007, prices on decent GPS units that just do the navigation thing mostly and do it well started dropping well below $200, like $130, $150. It literally varies from week to week. I've seen Mio's C230, which has great nav and some geek-friendly bits like access to your lat lawn, satellite information and stuff, on sale from $140, actually $128, up to about $240. Shop around. Shopping around is critical because the same model is often literally a $200 GPS could be $150 to you know, $250 depending on where you're buying it. Now, in that price range, along with the Mio C230, a lot of folks love the TomTom Tom One, and mm -hmm. the Garmin Nuvi 200 offers a great interface. I love Garmin GPSs. I'm also really liking the Mio C230's interface. I'm partial to TomToms. Really? Yes. You're a TomTom Tom person. I like TomToms, and I like the Garmin Nuvi. Garmin makes really good GPS units. They do. At the low end, do not obsess with screen size or the lack thereof. When you're driving, you want clear, crisp voice directions. Text-to-speech is a really cool thing if they have it. It's, you know, make a right on Elm Street in one quarter mile instead of make a right in one quarter mile. It's really nice to actually have street names to help you identify things. If you can't tell, I'm shopping more on the low end, which is why I'm so familiar with those models. I prefer the British voices. The personally. British voices? I've noticed usually... Please turn left. May, one of the things that was the, the, the Mio was really funny is it had one spectacularly clear, excellent voice, and mm -hmm. then like all the alternate voices sounded oh, like a man. Mac. <laughs> like I've, I've I seen that. I forgot who cases. it was, but there's one company that you can get Mr. T reading your directions. <laughs> they actually have celebrities reading the directions. I think you can get like Tommy Lee Jones and and Mr. That would be T cool. and some other people. I can't remember. I think it might be Tom Tom actually. Directions in Texas. Don't quote me on that. You just can't make the measure of them. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, what did he say? <laughs> he, Roger said, I pity the fool. I pity the fool that makes a wrong turn. Take a left. He, no, he says things like that on, on the GPS. He does like little funny things like that, too. I don't think I want quite that much entertainment for my GPS. That'd be hilarious, no? I'm not, I, I don't know. Oh, you're Tommy lame. Tommy Lee Jones might be really lame. kind of wild. I, I want that. You, Anyhow. You need to find that vendor. I will. All right, before we go, we want to make or take. <laughs> oh, I've got an idea. Wait. I've got an idea. Let's talk about the sponsors. Why don't I get a light bulb? Uh -huh. As you know, GoDaddy.com is a long-running sponsor of Revision 3 and, of course, TechZilla. In recognition of that, we hosted the best GoDaddy domain name ever. Ever! A contest where ever. I like it. Do that again. Ever! I like that thought. A contest where viewers submitted the best domains they've got registered with GoDaddy.com. All entries were due noon, Monday, April 28th, and the winner is announced today. Today! Today! Yay! Yay! Yes, plus not only will the winner get a plug on the show, but they'll also be getting a free year of hosting from GoDaddy. I like that thought. Are you ready? I'm excited. You want to read the winner? No, you can. Are you sure? You can. Do you it. You should read it. Read it. Come on. Okay. I dare you. All right. The winner is Tyler McIntyre, and his web domain that he registered is pandatalkstech.com. <laughs> PandaTalksTech. I want to be on that show. <laughs> PandaTalksTech.com? Mm -hmm. You're going to be an animated Arr! panda? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. All right. He says, when I find the time, it will be a video blog hosted by a panda. I can't wait to see how he pulls that one off. <laughs> Talking about his frustrations with technology. Right now, it just points to my blog, but you can find episode zero in the video section. Do we have video of that to roll? Well, you know the, uh, the panda that sneezes? 
Uh, you know, the really... The baby it be, panda? It could be the baby panda. That can be the host. Every time I, I, I see that video, I think of the 30 Rock scene with the firing. Oh, Isn't yeah. Isn't this the cutest thing you've ever seen? Mm -hmm. You have to get rid of 10% of your workforce. <laughs> Tyler, you, however, do not need to get rid of 10% of your workforce. You get yourself a free year of GoDaddy.com hosting. Now, if you didn't win, don't give up. This contest is going to be repeated next week on the Totally Rad Show. That's May 6th. So once the Totally Rad Show and re-enter, you just might get lucky. Yep, and don't forget, if you want to make an impact online, do it with GoDaddy.com. .com names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. That's $1.99, by the way, not $199, <laughs> just $1.99. With those $200 domain names. I know, no. they're, they're wicked cheap. Plus, enter code TECH1 when you check out and save an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. Support us by supporting them. Because if you don't support our sponsors, we're like toast. We like don't get paid. That would be bad. And stuff. And you won't get to see us anymore. No, I actually have a really funny domain name. What is it? AngryKittenMilitia.com. <laughs> I haven't put anything there yet. Angry Kitten stock yeah. tech that's wrong to them. No. Uh, I'm a panda. Looks like it's time for yet another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. Today's pick, Hard OCP. If you're a wicked hardcore PC gamer, chances are you either have or are in the process of overclocking your PC. But squeezing every ounce of delicious performance from your components isn't for the faint of heart. It requires attention to detail, a sense of adventure, and frankly, a good online resource. And there's no better site for your overclocking info than Hard OCP. With its up-to-date reviews on CPUs, motherboards, video cards, and power supplies, plus the latest information on hardware technologies and developments, you'll be ready to pick your PC parts like a pro. Of course, the greatest value Hard OCP has to offer is its forum, with topic threads that cover overclocking, cooling, PC building, as well as stickies that offer the basics for newbies and veterans alike. You'll be sure to find the answer to whatever overclocking and PC performance questions you may have. If you fancy yourself a PC performance enthusiast, you definitely need to visit Hard OCP. All right, Patrick, where are you at, dog? Oh, oh sorry. Where are you at? I was like, uh, Put that away. I was on Twitter. God, you're freaking like all over the war. place today. I, you're fracking. I'm fracking. You're fracking all over the freaking place. Wicked hot. Are you ready for some more questions? Um, or are you going to go? I'm wicked ready. Play with your toys down there. I'm, I'm done playing with my toys down That's there. That's good. Absa Smurfly. Absa Smurfly. We got an email from AJ about IP tracking. He wants to know. Oh, this is so creepy. I was wondering if you know how to trace someone's IP through Yahoo Messenger and use that IP to locate a person's whereabouts. Please advise. Thanks, AJ. AJ, why would you do that? Well, actually, I can why think of a... Why would you do that? Well, if you want to know where somebody is... I mean, first of all, AJ... Why don't you I, just ask them? I got to say this to you. I got to be honest with you. That, that young woman you fell in love with on IM is probably a 40-year-old man somewhere. I'm just laying that out there. We're just being honest with you. We don't it, want you to get hurt. On the internet, nobody knows what you are if you're typing through an IM interface. My understanding, though, is, is that the IP addresses resolve themselves at Yahoo's servers. So basically, uh, uh, you are going to be blind, right? It's your IP to Yahoo's uh, server IP, and then Yahoo does its internal thing, and it's their IP to, to Yahoo's IP address. In which case, the truth is, is, is uh, IP address ranges and basically you can track IP addresses against global locations, but it's it's not a fine art in most cases. Because it gets routed through other places all the time, right? Yeah, or maybe it's registered to Amalgamated Weasels Corporation who's headquartered in Guatemala, but you're actually using part of the IP range. It's in Tibet or something mm -hmm. else. It's just it's it, it's like geo tracking or, or geo mapping of IP ranges. There's cool things to do so you can get some really good ideas, but generally it's not a fine art. Yes, when I go trolling on the internet, I route my IP address through your home uh, router, actually, so it looks like it's you that does it. So it's you're the one that's doing the BitTorrent yeah. downloading. Yeah. That was 37 gigabytes last month. No, it's you, as far as anyone can prove. I hate it when that happens. So, AJ, I hope that helps you out a bit. Stop being creepy. Stop being creepy. Agent. Actually, he, he may, maybe it's somebody who dissed him. Maybe he thinks it's a long-lost relative. Maybe. Let's, let's think the best about people. No. That's understandable. Time for another email. I think so. Brian writes in. He says, I have an older laptop that is old. 
old enough to have a dead CD drive and new enough to not have a floppy drive installed. What? Is there a way to reload Windows XP onto the machine without being able to access a floppy or a CD drive? Hmm. Can I remove the hard drive and install it on a different computer? Thanks, Brian. Okay. Well, you could actually try if you get a, there's a good chance it'll recognize a USB CD-ROM drive. Mm -hmm. um, or you can actually replace a CD-ROM drive in there. Now, you know, you look at the fancy MacBooks here and you notice something, there's a little slot and there's nothing down here, but on a lot of PC notebooks, you'll see like basically a big square area around your CD-ROM DVD drive and a little screw holding it in. And you can slide the whole unit out, take the little plastic faceplate off that matches your notebook, and install a replacement. You can pick those up used. You can pick them up from Newegg.com. The interface is pretty standard um, and pretty easy to find. And you can actually upgrade like from a CD-ROM to a CD burner or even right. a DVD burner, yeah. which is fun. Oh, a 2.5-inch hard drive? Yeah, you can actually put that in. You can actually use a 2.5-inch hard drive adapter, or you can put it in an external case. Um, to turn it into a portable drive with like a you know a ten twenty dollar two point five inch drive adapter. Not bad. Not bad. So there's at all. some hope. Lots of hope. There is hope yet. You should be able to revive that machine. Excellent. Well, we are a viewer generated show, it's true. and uh, we live on your questions. Please. So email us revision three at techzilla .com, Tech help, product reviews, how tos. You ask us, we'll do it. And we want to make that clear that some people are like you know we want to see more how tos on the show, not just these questions. Yes. Ask us how to do it. We'll do it. You send yeah. us an email question, we'll figure out a way to do it. Or at least we'll try. Or we'll tell you. We have no idea how to do this. Why don't one of you tell us how to do this and we'll make that person famous. Yeah, because you guys are seriously freaking smart. And there's a lot of you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, send them in Texilla at revision3.com. And as yeah. always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. I actually made a uh, post up there about this whole how-tos versus yeah. email thing. So go in there and discuss it. Ask us how to do something. That's a great email yes. question. And while you're there, check out our forum thread on Serenity, which Yay. is a freaking awesome movie. How many times have I said freaking in this episode? This is like freaking 20 times. Like freaking 20 million times. 22 times. Apparently, it's my crutch word this week. Get into a friendly <laughs> argument or a raging discussion on our forums. Good, bad, or just plain awful. Debate in our forums and let us know what you think. Plus, previous episode of Texilla are waiting to be rewatched right now, revision3.com slash Texilla. You can find out more details on how to get the show or how to subscribe to the show and have it automatically show up in your life each and every episode or even the dailies at Texilla.com. Don't forget, you can be one of the 15 lucky viewers that'll have the opportunity to participate in an online meeting with me. That's just so creepy when I say it that way. And Roger, who's an extraordinary human being, the producer of our show, Roger Chang, on May 5th, 12 o'clock Eastern. That's noon Eastern, 9 o'clock Pacific, courtesy of GoToMeeting.com. Come in, join up, talk to us, yell at us, have us show us your desktops. It'll be fun with your feedback and suggestions. We want to keep growing Techzilla into the perfect tech show for all you people out there. Now, for a chance to participate, do us a favor, sign up if you haven't already for a free go to meeting trial with the code techzilla then email us techzilla at revision3.com with the subject line go to meeting contest include your go to meeting confirmation number and you'll be automatically entered into the drawing for a chance to participate in the fabulous online meeting with me and roger Yes, and if you're in San Francisco Bay Area this weekend, don't forget to check out Maker Fair at the San Mateo Fairgrounds this Saturday awesome. and it's Sunday. Awesome. It's great. And squee! It's, squee! It's just awesome. It's a great way to spend the day, like hanging out outside, looking at all sorts of nerdy and geeky stuff. Everything from people doing these crazy homemade bicycles to steampunk. the incredible spectacle, steampunk, steam mm -hmm. engines, fabrication, knitting, all sorts of arts and crafts, heavy metal DIY. It's just incredible. Exactly. If you want to learn how to make something or you're interested in seeing what outrageous or clever things people can cobble together yeah. in their basement, visit Maker Fair this weekend. And if you're lucky, you might even catch us running around the fairgrounds. I'll be there on Sunday. I will be there on Saturday, actually. Oh, and never I'm going down with that. Roger. So. Ooh, yeah. Roger's fun to hit this way. I know. Actually, we, uh, I've hung out with Roger there before, several times, actually, before I started working here. Yeah, I always end up, I always see him there and hang out. He's fun on a stick at Maker Fair. It's just fun out of control. Stick. Fun on a stick. That's awful sounding. Well, okay, he's a lot of fun. <laughs> on that creepy note, we'd like to thank you so much for watching this episode of Techzilla. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. We'll see you next time.